your heart be ready and would glory fill your soul if your master would come for you today is your life so full of duty that your lord is crowded out do you neglect to study and to pray would your heart be ready and would glory fill your soul if your master would come Good day viewers at home. Uh, we wish to welcome you this morning uh, for this powerful lesson um, as we continue the book of Daniel. Uh, we today on lesson number nine with the theme from contamination to purification. It's a powerful lesson. It's called to challenge us on some of the events which date back to 22 October 1844. We will unpack that. Um, but crucially, this lesson really deals with the purica purification of the heavenly heavenly sanctuary but before we we go to that we want to take you through systematically and start here on earth and transit with the heavenly sanctuary i'm joined by brethren very capable uh, loving god and on my left hand i've got brother kawe and on my right i've got uh, brother garabo uh, we are together at orlando east mm -hmm. and i've got uh, brother skumbuzo <laughs> We actually came back from very, very long time in university days back 20, 20 years ago. Brother Dan, maybe let's let's start with our memory text. Uh, it's found in Daniel 8, verse 14. Brother Skumbuza, going to read for us. Maybe just before we, we, we start reading, let's let's pray. Uh, Brother Karabu, please pray for us. May you be with us, Lord, as we go into this heavily prophetic chapter where we will learn more about um, the work of the purification that is happening in the heavenly sanctuary. May you align our lives and our minds with what Jesus is doing right now for us. Your Holy Spirit, descend upon us. Illuminate our minds with fresh jewels of truth. May you speak to us as you speak to the people at home. Bless us and bless them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Our memory text is found in Daniel 8, verse 14. Brother Crowell is going to read that one for us. Daniel 8, verse 14. It says, And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And he said unto me, For two thousand three hundred days, then the sanctuary shall be shall be cleansed. Um, we were sharing early on to say one of the authors, um, one of our authors, when when she comments on this text, she says, The scripture which above all is both the foundation and the central pillar of our movement is the scripture because at the end of this prophecy, then our movement is, mm -hmm. is, is, also, is also born. But I think that the contamination of and the purification of, of, of the sanctuary can be clearly understood when we go back to the origins in Daniel chapter 7. Because Daniel chapter 7, um, from, verse, from verse 9, um, from verse 9, Daniel says, He behold, I mean, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit. I mean, when they are cast down, they are being put up. Yeah. So he says, The thrones um, they, are, they are being put up or being arranged, and God is seated on his throne, and the books are opened. And then, quite interestingly, and then in verse 14, is, is taken to another vision. He then sees the Son of God. He comes to the Ancient of Days mm -hmm. to begin the work, the work, the work of, 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 of mm -hmm. judgment. Mm -hmm. Just for us to be sure, I mean, he's, he, he's because some have said, he, no, he comes to the Father because he's coming back. He's not coming back, but he's, he comes to join the Father yep. to begin the, the work, the work of, 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 of judgment. I think this is quite crucial because... Uh, where we are now, some do not know that there is a work of judgment that is mm. that is currently happening, and we need to 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 to, to sort of hammer hammer this point, so that um, as we live today, our lives are uh, we are propelled, you know, mm. 
by the session, by the judgment which is currently in session. Mm -hmm. So that whatever we do, we, we do it knowing that there is a judgment which is in session. And as such, I mean, if you look, if you look back at, at, at the book of Leviticus, which I'm sure we'll go to um, mm -hmm. quite, 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 quite soon, when the priest in the earthly sanctuary now was busy with the work of investigative judgment, the congregation of Israel, as they were, waiting for him, you know, to do, to finish his work. He says they were afflicting their souls. It was a day of rest. So there was a solemnity which went with this, with this, with this, with this event. So that at the end of it all, because the, the prayer here was, at the end of it all, because it was a day of judgment, at the end of it all, our sins may be, may be, may be forgiven. Mm -hmm. uh, just one of the things, you know, uh, the, the scene in chapter 7, becomes very important. Yes. Uh, I know we're supposed to be doing uh, uh, chapter 8, uh, yes. but I think the, the scene, uh, the fact that this whole scene is happening in heaven, Yes. it does talk to, you know, uh, where you see judgment happening in heaven, yes. it talks exactly to your point to say that uh, in as much as there was an, eth uh, an earthly sanctuary, sanctuary there was a heavenly, there is an, a heavenly, uh, heavenly uh, sanctuary. Yes. And all these things are happening in the heavenly sanctuary. And therefore, as we look at what, uh, as we are going to look at what um, the little horn yes. has done with the earthly sanctuary, mm -hmm. we must always never lose hope of the fact that uh, there is a heavenly sanctuary. Yes. And I think when the, the memory text talks about uh, uh, unto 2,300 days, mm -mm. then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Mm -mm. You know, there we're talking about a, hev a heavenly sanctuary. So yes. from that perspective, we must always look up and know that while, you know, while we know that uh, salvation is sure for the saints, yes, we can also rest assured that our faith mm -mm. is sure because God guards it and he's in control of it all. So as we are going to be looking at the, yes. at the earthly one Most and certainly. what the little horn has done, uh, we will always just, you know, we just have to keep on mm -hmm. uh, that. Yeah. As uh, you, you, you touched a bit about people who are having a problem with the judgment. Yes. What is interesting, though, is that the very same people who question the judgment are the very same people who are aware that Christ will come and he rewards his people. Mm. So you, there can never be a reward without an investigation. What are you being rewarded for? Yes. So the, the judgment there is not questionable. Okay. I, I think maybe as, we, as we're going to move now, especially dealing with the ram and, and the goat, which is also, I mean, which also uses sanctuary type language, particularly um, mm. language which was used in the day of, of atonement. I think I must, I must add this to say quite often we approach the issue or the topic of judgment with trepidation, with a sense of, you know, we fear. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, we have a high priest who went up to heaven in our own nature mm -hmm. and understands our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And this really should make us to not to fear judgment, mm -hmm. but but that judgment is going to be decided in our favor if daily we surrender ourselves yeah. to Jesus and if daily we confess, we confess yes. our sins. And then hence the Paul says we approach the throne boldly. with boldness. Yes. yes. About this, I mean, there's this issue of Rem and, 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 and the goat. Yes. Yes. Do you mind expand, expounding on, on, on that for us? Okay. So Daniel chapter 2, 7 and 8 from where we are standing, is a vision that talks about the four major universal kingdoms yes. that rule the world from the time of Daniel up until the end of the world. Yes. And, or the eschaton. And Daniel chapter 2 and 7 in particular. Mm -mm. Well, maybe if I begin with Daniel chapter 2, which speaks to the political situation of the world. Mm -mm. That's what it really talks about. Yes. And when you come to Daniel chapter 7, it talks about the political element of mm -hmm. the little horn kingdom, mm -hmm. the uprooting of the three horns. Yes. And yes. Then now when you come to Daniel uh, chapter 7, mind you, this is, it comes under the principle of repetition and enlargement. Mm -hmm. So the political uh, situation in Daniel chapter 2 
is enlarged in Daniel chapter 7 the same. with the introduction the of the little mm-hmm. horn power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you come into Daniel chapter 8, mm-hmm. now it's enlarged and mm-hmm. it talks now about the cleansing of the sanctuary. Mm-hmm. And if Daniel wants to talk about the cleansing of the sanctuary in chapter 8, then that means the symbols must change also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We come to Daniel chapter 7, there he's, he's given a description or the symbols of these four kingdoms mm-hmm. are under the description of four unclean hybrid creatures. Mm-hmm. But the creatures that are used in, in, in Daniel chapter 8, they are kosher, as the Hebrew, uh, yes. as the Jews mm-hmm. would say. Indeed, they are, they are mm-hmm. kosher, clean mm-hmm. kind of creatures. These are, 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 are sacrificial creatures. Mm-hmm. And the reason why he uses the ram and the he goat, it goes back to, um, I think it's Leviticus chapter 16. It is. The Hebrews, the ancient Hebrews, the Israelites, mm-hmm. they had what we call um, the day of, uh, of atonement. Mm-hmm. And in the day of atonement, they used two primar- primary sacrificial creatures. Mm-hmm. It was the ram Mm -hmm. and it was the he goat. Mm -hmm. And Daniel is using this symbol of clean animals Mm -hmm. in in, in chapter 8 because Mm -hmm. of he's now saying to the Hebrew reader at this time Mm -hmm. that we are addressing the issue of the sanctuary Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and particularly the cleansing of the sanctuary. And so the instrument, the the, the, the symbols are orientated, sanctuary orientated. And he's saying we are dealing with the day of atonement. Mm And we will see as we go on with our study that it deals exactly with that. But before I just close this one on the ram and the he goat. um, The ram, when we read in Daniel chapter 9 verse 20, Mm -hmm. says, The ram which thou sowest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. Yes. So we now see that the ram is a symbol of Mm -hmm. Mm Medo-Persia, which in Daniel chapter 7, it was represented by a bear. Mm-hmm. With one with one shoulder up and three yeah. ribs in yeah. his mouth, yeah. yes. and then when you repeat to Daniel chapter two, it was represented by the two hands of silver. Mm-hmm. If you remember that very well, mm-hmm. so here in Daniel chapter eight, it's represented as a ram, mm-hmm. and but now there are two elements: there's Medes and the Persians, mm-hmm. and the ram has two horns, yeah. and one horn is above the other, showing that the Persian Empire would be more dominant than the Median Empire, in the Middle Persian Empire. And then when you come to uh, verse 21 of Daniel chapter 8, it says, The rough goat is the king of Greece, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Mm, That's where we are told about Alexander the Great, Mm -hmm. who died in, I think it was 323 BC. Ah, At the age of 31. Yes, 31, Mm. 33, between those ages. Mm -hmm. And we see the symbology so clear. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to one of the lessons we did with Brothers Kumbuzo, Mm -hmm. that this is historicist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it it literally says that the the ram was a symbol of of the Middle Persian. Mm -hmm. And the rough goat was a symbol of Greece. Mm -hmm. And the first, and the horn that comes in between Mm -hmm. the the, the forehead is a symbol of the first king, Mm -hmm. which we know historically to be Alexander Mm -hmm. the Great. So we see that really Daniel chapter 8 is full of the sanctuary and particularly the day of atonement language. I think I'd like to end it there. Okay, so that, 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 that is good. That, that, that is good. I'm going to hand over to Brother Skombozo, maybe for him to expand. Okay, you, you want just, to say something? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the interesting things, this um, uh, this vision comes on the third year of Belcher's life. Yes. So it comes before Darius comes and takes his throne. Mm-mm. And yet... Daniel is clear to say the kingdom that will come up last will become greater. He says, out of these two, yes, you know, imagine if Darius was aware of these things, if Mm. he was a scholar of such these things. Mm. You know, for me, it 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 talks to how important this information is Mm. because this was before the the middle page came through. But had he seen this? Perhaps, you know, it would have prepared him better. Mm. But another thing that, you know, the lesson talks about, which is, uh, is the fact that uh, this, uh, this chapter does not go and address Pablo. Yes, sir. You know, it, it kind of it tells me of a God of a present truth. Mm-hmm. You know, because sometimes, you know, we, we, we don't, we always ask ourselves, how relevant is God? Mm-hmm. And, 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 Right at the time when the, the 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 Babylonian Empire was on its end, towards its end, and and God comes and says, "Guys, this is finished. Let's look on to the next thing." And I think mm-hmm. if we were to 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 actually uh, take that approach into the Word of God mm-hmm. and realize that while these things seems ancient, yeah. 
but they are written for our own admonition. Mm, and it is present truth, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's the beautiful thing about this: that God's word remains yeah. relevant as far as, as far as. Um, and quite interesting, on on that, uh, brothers Kongoza, If I can, I can say. I mean, Daniel chapter two, Nebuchadnezzar has shown a a vision that is the head of 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 the gold statue. Chapter three, he builds or erects a. A, a statue and of gold. Sure. Whereas it's been shown that your kingdom is temporary, it's mm. transient. Mm. Mm. Your time will come and after you, another kingdom inferior to you will come. But because of his arrogancy, he establishes a kingdom or a, or a statue of gold to denote that he wanted his kingdom to last forever. Then in chapter 8, he is not in the picture. The word of God is fulfilled oh, yeah. as God wow. as God as God wow. as God exactly. wrote it. Wow. So which really should call our confidence in the prophetic book oh, yes. of, of Daniel. There's nowhere else where the word of God can be seen as infallible mm-hmm. as in the book of Daniel. What is safe shall come to pass. Hey, it's mm. chopped off. Mm, mm, there's nowhere. Mm. <laughs> Love. Uh, I think the next one, which you, would you ask me to the, yeah, the, 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 the issue, yeah. I think the, the little horn, yeah. The little horn, yeah. The rise of the little horn. So, yes. so here we, we we see the the goat. Mm-mm. So after the Alexander has you know has died and his four generals takes over, mm-hmm. and we we see that coming out of those, and um, we you know as we are talking about it, we say it's not necessarily coming out of a particular kingdom, but it's out of a particular setting. Yes. You know, uh, coming out of that, you see the little horn coming out. You know. And it says this little horn, you know, it, it goes towards the south, towards the east, and it says it also no, goes no, no, the no. Uh, the pleasure. What's the south, east, east and, and towards the glorious land. Glorious land. Yeah. So in the when you start seeing it going towards the glorious land, you start hearing it, you know, starting to now uh, attacking the saints. Mm-mm. You know, uh, so 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 so. That little horn becomes then the subject of, of the uh, you know of what Daniel starts looking at and say, you know what, uh, everything starts evolving around this little horn. But you know there are some similarities that you know we start picking up about this little horn. Mm-hmm. You know that uh, uh, that uh, number one, this is you know now what the writer starts doing. He says, let's look at what seven and eight starts doing, you know, starts, he starts comparing uh, seven and eight. And you find that firstly, seven in, um, in seven verse eight, and well, eight in, 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 in chapter eight, verses nine, starts talking about this being a little horn. Mm-hmm. But you then find that, that this little horn starts growing and becomes, you know, a, a big horn. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and on top of that, this little horn starts doing something else, you know. Mm-hmm. So the writer starts drawing parallels to say we're actually talking to the same horn here because what this horn does in in chapter 7 seems to come you know strong in 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 chapter 8 and as a result you can start seeing that it's actually the same horn and and some of the the importance of this is that some of the features you would see it in chapter 7 and some of them you'll see it in, in in chapter 8 but you must understand that you're still talking to it's the same horn. Yeah. Um, and then after that, it says, listen, one of the important things is that it starts persecuting mm. the children of God. When oh. it starts going towards the glorious uh, land, the land mm. it starts persecuting the, the children of God. And then not only about that, this little horn, in fact, what's, what makes it different, what sets it very much apart, it starts having a mouthpiece. You mm. know, uh, so when, when, when we look at the, the four kingdoms, and you look at the four kingdoms that these prophecies, the, the three prophecies we, you know, we're trying to, to look at. Um, and I think towards the end, it, it draws parallel to, to what each symbol represents. Mm. Uh, we know that there is four kingdoms, which is uh, the last one being Rome. Mm. Now, with Rome, you then start seeing two characteristics emerging. And the, the first one, this being a horn meaning that this is actually a kingdom. Mm. And the next one, this horn starts persecuting. This horn starts uh, exalting itself above, you know, anything that is said to be God. And then, and it starts placing itself not only in a kingdom place, but it starts becoming a a religious figure. Mm -hmm. And I think that becomes very important to, to, you know, to say, 
uh, the Roman Empire started becoming a papal role. And I think that is that is that is what we are we're talking about here. Okay. And, and to some people, it might seem uh, very offensive, you know, because you're now saying, uh, you know, when you start talking about papal role, you start saying, are you now talking about what I believe in? But the reality of it is that it is a transition from a pagan Rome, which was more of a kingdom, into a, a, a papal Rome, which mm. now becomes a, a, a religious figure. Mm. And I think that's that's that, that's that one. And then, unfortunately, um, for for it, but fortunately for the saints, uh, God comes in and ends its time. Mm-hmm. It says, out of all the other ones, in fact, even Daniel chapter chapter two, it says. Then there shall come a stone, not cast off human hand. Mm-mm. You know, it shall come and disrupt this history. And mm-hmm. it shall come and hit it right on the feet. You mm-hmm. know, so you're seeing an end to a kingdom, mm-hmm. not out of a human hand. So you do not expect another kingdom to come and, 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 uh, uh, and put an end to this papal role. Mm-hmm. You, you expect God himself to intervene. Mm. Because now the war has transitioned. It's no longer about who's got the best missile, who's got the best force. It has now become spiritual. Um, I think that's that's uh, that's that. I don't know if yeah, others have got. So yeah. when when you go to Daniel chapter seven, we we are told about the emergence mm-hmm. of the little horn power, mm. but we are given in a political kind of uh, mm. perspective. But mm. we see then from Daniel chapter seven that it's a religious political system. Mm-hmm. It's a political system with a religious agenda. Yes. You know, yes. and that's the first thing that comes mm. in in Daniel chapter 8 when the little horn is introduced. described, yep. is introduced. Yep. You see, we are given the political nature of the little horn in 7, Mm-mm. but it's not with detail. Mm-mm. Now, in chapter 8, we are given the details of where this little horn power emerges mm. when it comes to the geographical setting of the whole planet. Mm-mm. So that's, that's, that's really what, so he, now he, he boils down into the details now of the origin mm-hmm. of the system. And he says that in, 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 in verse 9, And out of one, of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great towards the south, and mm-hmm. toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. So when you, this is a horizontal movement mm-hmm. of the little horn. Mm-hmm. So it is it emerges, it grows great. And all of these territories, history will tell us that these were the territories of the pagan Roman Empire. Mm. Which, which spread at horizontal. But now when you come to, to, to verse 10, it says, and it works great, even to the host of heaven. So now we see a change now. Mm-hmm. When it emerges, it spreads horizontal. Mm-hmm. But now in verse 10, it starts moving vertically. Mm-hmm. So it starts as a political mm-hmm. empire. Mm-hmm. Then as it moves in verse 10 towards, religious, religious it becomes power. now a yeah. religious political. So yeah. actually we have two phases here of the little horn power. Yeah. The first phase is the pagan Rome. That's verse 9. Mm. Yes. That's where it spreads horizontally. Mm. And the second phase is the papal Rome. Mm. And the reason why he's using the little horn as the only symbol of, of the empire and an extension of the mm. empire mm. is because the focus now has, has shifted. Mm. Now he's trying to say that actually the little horn power is the continuation of the papal power, or of, 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 of the pagan, pagan Rome time. power. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's, 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 it really shows that no, Rome in verse 10 continues its existence now as mm. a papal religious entity mm. with mm. civil power. Mm. And at that point in history, it becomes poisonous to an extent that it even offends the heavenly powers. Okay, yeah. I think at this at this point we need to, we need to review where, where where we are, because it does it does seem like to me that now a new power has has risen, yeah. because where we were before we were talking about ram, and yep. and, and the goat. Yes. So the kingdom of Medes and the and the Persians that oh, that overcame okay. uh, mm-hmm. Babylon. Yeah. And then when they came, they also overcame by this goat, which came with speed and rapidity, mm-hmm. depicting the speed within which it conquered, it conquered uh, the me- the Medes and the and, and the Persians. Mm-hmm. And now we are talking about a. And I'm, my understanding is that when 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 the Grecian kingdom was came to an end. I mean, I, I put it that way. Came to an end. Because uh, Alexander had no hair in his family, mm. then the four generals took over from him. Yes, sir. And then the, the, te- the text then, then says, out of one of the four, yes. then came the what? The, the little horn. Yeah. It's a new power altogether. In other words, we see now the, the emergence of the Roman Empire. Oh, yes. So in, in Daniel chapter 2 now, where are we? 
we are in the we're in legs. The, we're yes. in the legs the now. Feet. The feet. Okay. Sorry, the we're actually in the feet. The, we're actually in the feet. Yeah, yeah. the emergence. No, 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 the legs. No, we're in the legs. Oh, the legs. Yeah. No, she's when correct. We, when you're talking about... The, little, the little horn. Yes, when yes. it's still going, when it's still going, the legs. Is, exactly. Yeah. We are, we're now in the in, in, in the feet mm. of, of, of iron. Yeah. yeah. I, I would trigger on yeah. this one. That's fine. Daniel chapter 7, we are in the what? That terrible, that fourth beast, terrible, yes. that un, un, undescribable, yeah. that does uh, mercilessly mm. as it as it causes as it causes havoc, so that we take our people, at, our viewers at home, okay. systematically. So that that's where we are. That's where this little horn Im- emerges. And I heard you say that as it emerges, it it will it will reveal itself in two phases. Yes. Yes. At there first, it will become a pagan yeah. a pagan power. Mm-hmm. It does not believe... Which is a political power. A po- yeah. It's a pure political yes, sir. Po- politi- politi- political power. Mm. But its second transition, it is a power that embraces religion. Yes, Though it maintains some of its features yeah. from of, 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 the, of the pagan... Mm. Uh, political arm. Of, of the political arm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now it, it embraces... Uh, a religious a, scope of work. A religious scope scope of work. Yeah. Are we together on this one? Yeah. Yeah. In, yes, in yeah. fact, if you look at 11, um, where it says, um, and he magnified himself even to the prince of hosts. We're talking about Christ. So yes. now you're seeing itself uh, starting not only to be uh, political, it's starting now to be religious. Yes. And you see that, uh, you know, you might think that this is just another Nebuchadnezzar, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but when you start saying, um, and by him, the daily sacrifice were taken away. Mm-hmm. Now, now it starts not only to be a Nebuchadnezzar to say, I'm better than your God, mm-hmm. I'm creating. It's the, it, it now says, I am now going to interfere with your religious liberty. Okay. Mm. You know, now it's 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 becoming purely religious. Yes. You know, so 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 that becomes very you know very important because uh, I think it, uh, a brief what what uh, the the daily sacrifices you know when when people will on daily basis you know will come in and ask for forgiveness mm. and which will then culminate to the atonement. Okay, okay. Uh, so, so people co- daily will come and approach the Lord uh, with, a, with, a, with the sacrifice and ask for forgiveness. But then wh- how did the little horn implement this? Mm-hmm. Then the, the little horn through a, a, a confession box. I don't know. I've never been to a confession box. I see it on TV. But through, through things like, uh, you know, where you can now confess to a priest, Instead of confessing to Christ, you start confessing to a, a, a designated priest. Okay. In so doing, it now takes away the function of Christ. Yeah. You go in directly. So you're seeing those activities and others where the little horn started diverting the attention of saints from going directly to, to Christ. And in so doing, it actually broke down the the the. So and, and brother, can we the attack on the sanctuary now? Yes. Oh, sorry. Man. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. I, was, I, was, I was going to say the same. But I can't take us. I think it's is is laid a solid foundation. Yeah, yeah. You can <laughs> just build, build, yeah. build on that. Yeah, on the attack of the sanctuary. If we are to go to <laughs> the verse ten, if you are to go to verse ten, yes, sir. Uh, it says, and it worked great even to the host of heaven, mm. and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground mm. and stand up, up upon them. One thing which we must n- never forget is this. This warfare is not happening in heaven. This warfare is happening here on earth. And the, the people who are being attacked here are the saints of God. Mm-hmm. And, and then the, 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 the author of the lesson says this is obviously not a literal attack on the heavenly bodies. Okay. Mm-hmm. However, but a persecution of God's people whose citizenship mm-hmm. is in heaven. Mm-hmm. So here, what we see, Daniel is clear that this one is so deceitful, this one is so weedy, this one is so subtle. Mm. So much that some of the traditions which this one brings to, to the uh, people of God, they are not aware. Some people are being deceived. It's not 
direct that you are worshiping me. Mm -hmm. But the fact that this one tries even to change the, the laws, by changing the law, and then people f following the, the, the new law, in other words, you are f worshiping the lawgiver. God has got his laws. Mm -hmm. And then if we follow the laws of God, mm -hmm. it means we are worshiping God. Mm -hmm. But this person now, or this, this power, power yes. now, mm -hmm. tries to change the laws. Mm -hmm. And then many people will follow the new laws. And by default, we are following the law give. How does it attack the sanctuary? Let's let's deal with that question. How does exactly. it attack this power? A, 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 and then the, 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 this power, it says, and then it tried to change laws. To, to change laws. Mm -hmm. And then he attacked the, 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 the host. Mm -hmm. And then he tried to desecrate the daily Sacrifices. sacrifices yes and the, the daily sacrifices here is the gospel yes now the gospel is of christ the gospel is the truth mm -hmm. and then now this little one deceit deceives the people mm -hmm. so so much that the gospel of christ which is the truth gets contaminated okay. by lies, by traditions. Okay. And then the gospel here is contaminated. Hence, it has to be cleansed. Okay. Can, 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 can I then maybe conclude this section by saying the attack of the sanctuary really, I mean, it's got many, many, many layers. Mm -hmm. the, the one layer is the fact that this power speaks great words against the most high in other words it it, it claims to be god okay and number, me. and number two it it claims to have the power to forgive sins mm -hmm. but fundamentally this power seeks to install itself in the place of god so that the worship that should be given to god is given to it this is a count count total counterfeit uh, type type of, of of religion and in the place where this power should be extolling the virtues of studying the word. This, this, this power uh, promotes tradition and opinions of, of, of men in the, in, the place, in the place of the word of God. So I think, I think the uh, verses 12 yes. sums it up, the last part. And it cast down the truth, truth to yeah. the ground. Yes. I, think, I think that sums what the little horn is doing. Yes. In all these things that the little horn is doing, to say that it seeks to change the times, you know, uh, and the laws, uh, all of these things, these are things that the Bible is clear about. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think the, the, the lesson does talk to say, you know, in the earlier times, the papal role, by making sure that the, the Bible is only restricted to certain few, by not translating to anything else, mm. it made sure people don't have access. Mm. And in so doing, it can dictate what truth is. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it can dictate what is supposed to be the truth. Mm. Uh, and I think, I think uh, it, 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 it then becomes important to viewers that for you to be foolproof of what the, 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 the little horn is doing, mm -hmm. read the Bible yes, the and word. read it for yourself. God has, has given us a wonderful mm -hmm. gift. And I think uh, in order to, 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 to see these things, we should be spending some time you know, in, 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 all right, um, just I'm looking at time. Okay, so okay. Just two, just two minutes. Okay, just okay, just just two minutes. Okay. Section, yeah. On on the attack on on the sanctuary, just to contextualize it. Yes. And and base it really pure, dealing purely with the text. Yes. When we look at um, verse ten, That's it eight. says, "Yes, just chapter eight. eight. Okay. It works great even to the host of heaven, mm -hmm. and cast down some of the host of the stars to the ground and." stumbled upon them. Mm. I think maybe that's a very strong imagery that we need to understand. Did the, mm. did the little horn power literally put a hand in heaven mm. and mm. cast down the stars mm. and mm. trample them? Or oh, mm. does it mean something? And we do know that this is apocalyptic. So the mm. visions Prophecy. are a symbol of something. Yeah. And the author says the term host mm. and stars can designate God's people 
in the Old Testament. Mm. Israel is des designated the host or armies mm. of the Lord. And he references Exodus 12, verse 41. Daniel also depicts God's faithful people as shining like the stars. So in other words, if the host and the stars are symbolic of God's people, mm -mm. and this little horn power is trampling them, Mm -hmm. This might be parallel to Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, mm -hmm. where it talks about the little horn doing persecuting what? The saints. Persecuting the, the saints. saints. So yes, I think sir. that's what the trampling the means, exactly. yeah. which is the persecution of the saints, which happened for time, times years. and half a time, which yeah. is 1260 mm -hmm. prophetic days. During the Dark Ages. Right? During the Dark Ages, yeah. yes. the time of the yes. medieval church. So yes. I, think, I, think, I think when I looked no, at verse 10, yes. that's, that's what I was picking up yeah. when we must, deal must, really must with the text. Must and then when we come now and it says he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. Mm -hmm. And we know that in, in chapter 9, the prince of the host is the Messiah. Yes. And it's not, not nobody else than the Messiah. Yes. And it says, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. Now the daily in the original language is the tamid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, which mm -hmm. simply means the, the, the daily processions of the sanctuary rituals. Mm -hmm. So if it says that he also tempered with the daily of the, or, or the daily sacrifice, mm -hmm. it simply means that this little horn power mm -hmm. supplants or usurps the sanctuary and its services. Mm -hmm. So why, what the prince, the Messiah is doing in the heavenly sanctuary mm -hmm. is supplanted by this little horn power. Mm -hmm. By doing what? By trampling the daily. Because mm. what he's saying is he's replacing the activities that the Savior is mm. doing in the heavenly sanctuary mm. by performing these activities mm. on earth, which is one of the integral points mm. of identifying this little mm. horn yeah. power, which is placing an attack on God's sanctuary. And mm. I think that's where the contamination comes in. Mm. Yes. That's I think that's where it's contaminated. Yes, mm. that, that, that is where. Thank, thank you so much for, for, for that. Mm. I mean, at the heart of judgment or sanctuary service, is the whole plan of redemption, mm -hmm. is the whole plan of salvation. I mean, some people think that salvation began and ended at the cross. Yet in the book of Hebrews, it opens a new world for us. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That apparently when Christ arose, he then went on to heaven yeah. to begin to officiate you know, in the sanctuary, not built by the hands of men, yes, sir. but yes, sir. by God himself. Yes, it's a literal sanctuary. Yes, sir. It is. And the one earthly was made after the one which was, which was, yeah. which was in, in heaven. Yes, sir. And I mean, if you look, Pastor uh, Kumbuza mentioned this uh, in Leviticus 16, that the earthly was contaminated because daily the saints of God would go into, into the temple mm -hmm. to sacrifice and to confess their sins. Yes. And once on the seventh month of, 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 of the calendar of the then days, on oh. the tenth day, this day was called the day of atonement or a Yom day Kippur. of judgment. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Where the priest would go into the most holy place. Yeah. The high priest, not just know the high priest would go in there hmm. to, 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 to conduct a service where the sanctuary will be cleansed of all the sins which was symbolically transferred to it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And when this oh, was yes. happening, the saints, this was a solemn day. Mm. So there was no chit chatter. There was no joking around and fooling around mm -hmm. because we knew that this is a day of judgment. We ought to be praying together with the priest so that when he finishes his work, mm -hmm. our sins are forgiven. forgiven yeah. It seems that then 1844, 22 October, Christ began this work. When, Daniel, when in Daniel chapter 7, he moves from wherever he was, from the first apartment, mm. to join the father in the second apartment, yes, then he begins with, with this, with this mm -hmm. word. And then the question, it, it beats the question, but what, what sort of attitude should we be having yeah. in a time yeah. like this? Yeah. Yeah. Because he is busy still with the work of salvation. Yes, sir. Because when he ends, when he finishes, he's going to say, it's, it's done. And let him who, who's, who's what? Who's in Russia, be in Russia still. Yes, mm -hmm. And let him who is holy. Be holy still. So for me, gentlemen, I want us to, to sort of look at the cleansing of this. What is it cleanse of? Because it's not the earthly now, it's the heavenly. Yes, sir. What is what 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 is being cleansed here? Amen. Verse 12. Yeah. Verse 12 it says, and an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. Mm -mm. And I love what you said when you were speaking about the heavenly tabernacle. Yes. That during the daily sacrifices that were done every day. To be contaminated. Sin was, yes. Yeah. Sin was transferred into the tabernacle mm -hmm. symbolically through the blood of the animals. Yes. Of yes. the ram and the he goat. That comes back to the symbology again. Yes. Now, when the sins were trans was transferred by 
transgression. Mm -hmm. The sanctuary tabernacle was contaminated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on the 10th of October, mm. once a year, mm. we would have what the Hebrews call Yom Kippur, which is the day of atonement. Of atonement. Mm -hmm. But now Daniel here, remember, he's a prophet of the end. Mm -hmm. So he cannot be talking about uh, the temple that is in, 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 in Palestine at this time. It's in heaven. Mm -hmm. But he is talking about the, 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 the antitypical mm -hmm. sanctuary mm -hmm. of the antitypical mm -hmm. day of, of atonement, atonement yes. Yes. whereby mm -hmm. the sins that have been cleansed are cleansed in the heavenly tabernacle, mm -hmm. which is built with hands that are not man's hands. Mm -hmm. So, but then it begs the question, what is being cleansed? Yes, that's my, yeah. that's my question. What yeah. is being cleansed in the heavenly sanctuary? That, that, yeah. that, that, is, yeah. the, that is the question. Yeah. <laughs> because re, 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 remember, to, to my point, that salvation did not end at the cross. Yes, sir. I mean, Paul beats us in the book of Hebrew that let, let us approach the, the throne of God yeah. with boldness. We still confess our sins today, <laughs> and mm -hmm. those sins get transferred yes. symbolically. Yes. yes. To, not to the sanctuary in on earth, yeah. but to the sanctuary where in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So our sins then get transferred there, and Christ is busy with this ministry of cleansing that sanctuary yes. of the sins of our daily sins which we confess so to him if 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 atonement was fulfilled at calvary yes then we should not have a high priest right now exactly who is sprinkling his blood yeah. as our mm -hmm. sins ascend yes. to the heavenly sanctuary yeah. yes you know one friend of mine <laughs> once said to me that during this time of antitypical day of atonement yes where the sanctuary has been purified of the sins that are transferred to it by faith in the blood of the lamb mm -hmm. he says if we as individuals do not have our, our, our dishes, dirty mm -hmm. dishes, delivered to be washed once the sanctuary is been cleansed. Mm -hmm. The time will come when mercy will be closed. Yes. And mm -hmm. you will try to take your dish mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. confess your sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now they would have finished washing mm -hmm. the dishes. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's really what I loved. That in this time, mm -hmm. it's good to confess our sins. Mm -hmm. But there needs to be a work of purification in yes, our sir. lives. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There that's has good. to be a work of purification oh, that definitely. will correlate and complement the work that is happening at this exactly. last phase of judgment, which really determines the last days. You see, when we talk about the last days, we're talking about the Hebrew sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Because where the, the daily sacrifices were made every day, mm -hmm. that's what Jesus did when he ascended mm -hmm. after Calvary. Mm -hmm. But when he moved into the most holy place, it was to finish the work of salvation. Mm -hmm. It is at this time in history where people are to be purified of sin mm -hmm. in their private life. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus is cleansing the sanctuary. Exactly. And sin continues to contaminate the sanctuary. sanctuary. And that's what's been cleansed in the antitypical yeah. day yeah. of atonement. Yeah. Well, that's I think, uh, I think, I think, finishing it off, yes. Okay, yeah. I think um, <laughs> Sorry. an appreciation of the heavenly sanctuary and the role that Christ plays today, mm -mm. it also safeguards us against the counterfeit. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because mm -mm. if we, we accept the belief that Christ is busy atoning for, 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 for our sins, we will then clearly accept the fact that we no longer need any earthly priest. Mm -hmm. Because, in fact, uh, to accept an earthly priest that we can go and confess to does not go in line with what is happening in heaven. Yeah. And I think it, 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 it becomes very important, therefore, therefore, to appreciate the work that Christ continues to do mm -hmm. in, in, yeah. in heaven. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just one, something else. You know, sometimes this thing of sins being transferred it can be very difficult to, you know, understand. this is one thing to understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and something that, that, you know, that the Lord uh, showed, you know, impressed in my heart is that mm. whenever I have a burden mm -mm. and I share it with somebody else, mm. it becomes your burden. Mm. 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 Whether you like it or mm. not, mm. it Amen. starts becoming your burden. So, 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 so literally I have transferred my burden to you by telling you. And if you look at what used to happen on daily sacrifices, it's mm. exactly that. You know, I will go there and I'll go and confess my sins. Yeah. Mm -mm. And that burden moves away and it becomes mm -mm. The, yeah. the burden that is, you know, that, that is sitting with the sanctuary now. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so if for some reason you just don't understand this, how does this blood issue transfer? Yes. But it, in the same way that it happens in our life, mm -hmm. you know, it's not too far from us telling our deepest secrets to someone else. Mm -hmm. But to, to his point that... Uh, if we now uh, have a high priest that we can go directly to, and then surely that needs to be cleansed. Yes, and mm. I think that that answers your question mm. to say that our sins are now being being being, being atoned for by by Christ. Yes, sir. Mm. The sprinkling of His blood mm. and the forgiveness of sins yes, still continues to this day. Mm. But I mean, 
when the power, the power that forgives is this very same power that also enables us yeah. on a day-to-day basis yeah. to stay above sin yeah. so that we have no reason, we have no reason to continue in sin. Yeah. Yeah. Because the grace of God does not only pardon, but the grace of yeah. God also sanctifies. In other words, it gives us power on a day-to-day basis yeah. to overcome, yeah. to overcome and, sin. Okay. And, 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 and you, you touched it a, a, a bit, Brother Popong. Hmm. And if we really understand that Christ is intercessing for us, yes, and then we understand the day of our Tournament. Yes, sir. And then we should ask ourselves a question. What kind of an attitude did the Israelites have during the day yes. of a tournament? Very important. And then what manner should we? Should we? Yes. Today, yes. Today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Thank you, you so much. You know, there's something that you spoke, and I think it's very profound that mm. separates these. Christ is is uh, atoning us with his blood. Yes. Mm. I think that's very important. Mm. If you continue to to choose the atonement by the little horn, mm. the atonement, the, the little horn, the best they can do is to atone it with their own blood. Mm. And and their blood is not fit enough to forgive you. Mm-mm. And yeah. and unfortunately, no matter how much you like, Mm-mm. it will never cleanse you of your sin. Mm, yeah. But now... You know, coming to Christ, who is the the, 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 the worthy Lamb of God, mm. He's able to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, Therefore, which which then makes us that we should take very seriously what Christ is doing, as opposed to what the little horn is doing. Gentlemen, as I just before we end, can I can I then conclude safely conclude and say, the 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 ideal, the main objective, the fundamental objective of this work is so that at the end, we are at one moment with Christ. Oh, yeah. okay. That's it. Woo! So that, so, so because it's, it's not just, it's not earth to heaven, but it's earth back to Eden Ooh. before the entrance of sin. Yes, sir. So this power, yes, this, 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 this whole ministry is, is basically to restore us back mm. to the stature of Adam before the entrance of sin. Yes, sir. Because it is only then that Adam was at one moment yeah. with, yeah. with, with yeah. Christ yeah. before yeah. the entrance yeah. of sin. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and, and, the, and this whole work, really, mm-hmm. is designed mm-hmm. to cause us oh. to be at one moment, yeah. at oh, one moment yeah. with, with Christ. Yeah. So when, he, when he looks at us, he actually sees himself yeah. reflected in, in, in us. Oh. Yeah. Not just partially, mm-hmm. but oh, fully. Yeah. Oh, Not on the other side of heaven, yeah. but on the side yeah. of, of heaven. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That's true. Beautiful. Yeah. Shimon, thank you so much. I hope viewers at home did enjoy this lesson as much as we did. But more than more than more than anything, it will cause for all of us to action and to do something. Uh, we're gonna pray, and then the next lesson that we will have is lesson number ten. Lesson ten is from confession to consolation. So that cow is going to pray for us. Okay, let's close our eyes as we pray. To the Father, what in heaven? What manner of love is this? That in these last days, we can even trace your love from the throne of heaven. These prophecies, they are showing us that you are with us. They are showing us that you are in control. They are giving us an awakening so that we can understand what a time is it. Mm. As we understand that the night is first spent and the day draweth nigh, mm. let us walk the way we would love to, so that at the end of the day we shall all be saved. In the name of our Lord soul, and Savior Jesus Christ. If you must thank you very much. Thank you so much. Love. Is your life so full of duty that your Lord is crowded out? Do you neglect to study and to pray? Would your heart be ready and would glory fill your soul if your master would come for you today?